Good morning, everyone. This is Richie from Worthington Distribution. We're about five minutes from start time. We just wanted to thank you for joining us this morning. So uh, just please bear with us, and we'll be starting off in a few minutes. We're going to put it back into the, um, uh, the, the waiting room mode, and we'll start up the webinar in just a few minutes here.
Good morning, everybody. This is Richie from Worthington again. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's give you a brief background on what we're going to cover today, and then we'll turn it over to the folks at Parakeet to, uh, to put this presentation on for you so you can uh, do a little bit of learning this morning. So here at Worthington, we are getting an increased uh, amount of requests from our customers um, dealing with ways to automate or provide you know, kind of enhancements to uh, multifamily units, apartment buildings, sometimes vacation rentals, but very often in apartment buildings. And these don't necessarily have to be hundreds of units uh, in an apartment building, but it can be, and that's kind of what we see. Um, and a lot of times the request is how to automate these, and, and it comes down to using Z-Wave. This is absolutely doable, and there are a lot of paths that you can go down. The reason we wanted to introduce you to Parakeet this morning for that application is uh, they have built a system specifically to do this. And as you'll see in the, in the next couple of slides here, um, you know, the standard Z-Wave gateway is not always the best fit in a multifamily unit type of scenario. Um, Parakeet is really built for that type of scenario where there is end user control, yet there's also a ton of control for the property manager, uh, alerts potentially for the property manager. So it really serves both parties, the renter, the tenant, as well as the building owner, uh, and they both get quite a bit of benefit out of it, and the end result is you know, they can rent those apartments out maybe quicker or uh, for a little bit more rent because they're equipped with this technology. So that being said, I'd like to turn it over to Dan Engel. Dan's with Parakeet, and uh, he's much better suited to explain this. You know, as, as you have any need for anything like this, go ahead and contact us here at Worthington. And, uh, you know, because this is a Z-Wave system, all the standard Z-Wave devices that you're used to from us uh, are in play here. So locks and thermostats and lighting devices and sensors. And um, it's just that we use the Parakeet Hub instead of some other hub you may be familiar with in the past, again, because it's built for this. So with that, Dan, I'll turn it over to you, and thanks a lot for joining us this morning. Dan, do we have you? Can you hear me? Is that better? There, I have you now, Dan. Oh, can you try that again, Dan? I think you're out. Does that make a difference? Hello, can you guys hear me? Richie? We have you now. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming on. Thank you, Richie, for that introduction. Really appreciate that. So we're all good now? We are good. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> so Parakeet was founded about three years ago by a guy named Brad Huber, who's also on the call. He's our CEO. We're based out of Provo, Utah. And uh, about two years ago, we launched the product into the vacation property market, helping vacation property managers to remotely manage their buildings uh, not have to go deliver keys to their guests and uh, basically just run a more efficient operation. I joined about seven months ago um, to help bring the, the company into the multifamily market. My background was uh, I've been a stockbroker for a long, long time. And in about 2007, founded a company buying apartment buildings using investor money. And we managed those uh, for about six, seven, eight years, sold the last building uh, at the beginning of last year. So I've got some good uh, <clears throat> good experience in the big, uh, not, excuse me the multifamily side, and uh, again, like Richie said, the reason we're bringing it to you today is that we think that with our system, we can help you sell a lot more, whether it's uh, devices, labor, uh, and even getting an RMR um, by uh, by installing this thing. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and go through the slides. Now, the slides I'm about to present to you are the slides that I actually send to the, uh, the apartment managers and owners to give them an idea of what we do. And I figured that would be a good way to start uh, to, 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 just to show you what we do and how we do it. So without further ado, most people or most companies are trying to solve the single home problem when it comes to smart home technology. So Parakeet actually is trying to solve or is solved uh, the enterprise smart home space. And what we mean by that is not just one smart home, but two, five, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 can be managed from the Parakeet dashboard um, very, very easily. And what that does for the multifamily managers, it helps them manage their, uh, their, their vacant units more efficiently and also offer their, 
a resident a, uh, uh, the ability to have a smart home. We use uh, standard smart home products like uh, Richie was talking about using Z-Wave. Uh, it could be lights, keys, thermostat, uh, flood sensors, garage door controllers, door window sensors, lighting, energy meters. Pretty much anything that can be controlled via Z-Wave, we can, we can handle. But typically, the, uh, the sweet spot is the locks, thermostats, and even the, uh, the flood sensors. That's what, that's what most apartment companies are, are looking for. So what I did was I, I started researching the multifamily space um, and trying to uh, talk to the managers and understand how we can implement this system. And through the course of a couple of months, uh, we, be, we basically put this deck together to, to, to help them to manage their properties again using smart home technology, offer their residents a, uh, a smart home and um, make more money. So basically, the, the way the system is set up is that through the Parakeet Cloud, which is offered through Verizon, the renter can control their smart home mobile app. The manager can control it through his dashboard. And what happens is, is any, any command is sent via cell signal to the Parakeet Gateway the parakeet gateway then speaks via Z-Wave to the door locks, thermostat, uh, flood sensors, uh, lighting control, pretty much anything, uh, like I said, uh, Z-Wave uh, compatible. <clears throat> so essentially, what is smart uh, enterprise smart home? So like I was saying, most folks uh, deal with just one house. How do I uh, install Alexa? How do I open my, my door lock? Uh, what we've solved is the problem of uh, how do I offer my residents at home and manage that all in one dashboard? And like I said before, you can manage hundreds or thousands of units, not just one. Now, again, like Richie was talking about, it does not have to be thousands of units. It could be a 50-unit apartment building. It could be a 25-unit apartment building. Uh, there, there really is no, no minimum, no, no real maximum to what you can do with it. It's built for, for everybody. Uh, in, in the multifamily space, whether it's the owner, property manager, and even the resident. So it's not just helping the manager, it's helping the resident, it's helping the owner to gain more money, um, all using our, uh, our dashboard. So what I asked them, you know, most of these uh, uh, property managers are trying to differentiate their building, trying to offer the latest granite, the latest basketball court, gym, whatnot. Uh, and one of the best ways to differentiate their product is actually through uh, Smart Home. <clears throat> Owners can get the most out of their investment. Uh, by installing uh, the door locks, they can get rid of a lot of, a lot of the inefficiencies that come with managing a uh, multifamily property. Renters also love Parakeet. Um, and what we found is, is about 50% of the the folks out there between 18 and 34 are very, very aware of smart homes. And it just so happens to be that millennials are also the folks that are mostly renting apartments these days. So it's kind of a happy, uh, happy fit. <clears throat> they want smart homes. And the reason they want them is it, it's, it's basically a way for them to uh, operate their house. They can walk out of their house, hit a button, door locks go off, lights turn off, uh, thermostat shuts down. And industry data shows that renters actually prefer a smart home over all things like gym, pool, upgraded kitchen. Pretty much the only thing that uh, values higher is actually an in-unit uh, washer and dryer. <clears throat> so it's, it's something that they definitely want. Easy setup. They can automate their climate control. They can get rid of their keys. They can let the dog walker in at work, et cetera, et cetera. Managers will love it. Uh, and this is, a, this is basically a small snapshot of the dashboard. So on the left-hand side for the property manager, he sees all of his different properties, what's happening, whether the door locks are open, whether there's a flood going on in any, in any given unit. Um, they can manage, again, multiple houses, a uh, whole house uh, on a network of, you know, let's say, 50 to 100 different vacation property homes. And with, for the renter, again, they have a mobile app where they can have access uh, to their energy, their thermostat, they can uh, prevent disasters by, by knowing that there's a flood condition that, it, that might exist. In other words, like a water heater might break, triggers the, the flood sensor, and then they get a notification, hey, you've got, a, you've got an issue in Unit 201. 
Excellence for property managers, they can reduce their operational costs, labor services, they can track the entries of staff, uh, reduce disasters again through the use of the, uh, the flood sensor, and essentially they can be everywhere at once. They really, really like all of these things. Um, and it, the kind of the cool thing is that it gives the property manager control, gives the renter uh, a, a pretty cool uh, amenity, and it's also something that they can charge for. <clears throat> So basically the way it works um, is the, uh, the existing software that the, um, the property managers use, like the uh, Yardi or, or, any, or, or any of those, we can integrate with that software to where if they populate their, their renters, um, they can automatically get programmed into our system so they don't have to do it twice. And they can get energy reporting, uh, they can find out what's uh, Air conditioning units are being operated more, uh, more or less efficiently. I don't know if you guys can really see that graph too well, but basically it just kind of gives a baseline right here of where an efficient uh, unit is being operated. Well, if, if some are being uh, used too much, if, uh, if the unit itself is not being, uh, or it needs maintenance, or, or if there's a window open, that sort of thing. So you can tell which units are, 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 are uh, running efficiently. This is the, uh, I'll try to make this bigger. Myself. Okay. We still good? Okay. We're good, Dan. All right. Okay, good. All right. So this is the, uh, this is a screenshot of the, uh, the mobile app that one of the things that we're working on with the mobile app is give the ability to the, uh, to the tenant to be able to communicate with the property manager. Property manager also has the ability to communicate with the tenant. Hey, you've got you know, a, a problem going on in, in a common area. You know, it's going to be closed. So basically everyone's notified. So they don't have to get a flyer and waste, waste paper and put it on every single person's door. They can actually be notified you know, via technology. All right. So the property managers, again, will love it. They'll never have to rekey another door using uh, smart locks. Um, Z-Wave, one of the locks that we use mostly is the Yale uh, push button and also the touch screen. And a couple others that we're working on, too, that we've uh, optimized for is Quickset. We have not started working with Schlage yet, but uh, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So again, just to, just to reiterate, Property managers can reduce and eliminate on-site staff. They can get rid of keys, operate vacant units uh, more efficiently. Contractors going in and out, they'll have a log of They can actually let the contractor in and out um, from their couch if they wanted to, uh, by issuing key codes or even uh, remotely locking or unlocking the door. It will help retain residents, uh, people that, that are using their smart home technology in their apartment. It, it's kind of a first for them. So if they have the ability to, to have a smart home where they was where they it wasn't available before, they're really really enjoying it. Again, uh, disaster prevention uh, turnover times are a lot faster. They can automate showings. Uh, HVAC maintenance is is much easier because uh, they can get a handle on how much uh, uh, the air conditioning units or even the heating units are are being worked, and they can control that. Automated showings. Um, I'll kind of just kind of run through this, not get into too many details. There's kind of a lot of uh, a lot of slides on this. So we have uh, APIs to be able to control, um, uh, or excuse me, to be able to populate using uh, software that the property managers are using, Yardi and Trotto and that. Now the reason I'm I'm saying this to you folks because what we're what our desire is is for you to be able to go out and sell into the apartment space kind of have a really good understanding of how Parakeet Systems working and how you can sell vacation property managers, uh, apartment property managers, pretty much any property manager that's managing multiple units with our system. Again, we are a software company. We're not interested in selling the hardware. Uh, that's what we want you folks to do is to go out there, find customers, or if you have, already have a customer, uh, we can help you to, to close that sale and you know make the money, make the revenue on the the hardware, uh, the installation, and even the monthly uh, monthly revenue that, that's generated from it. 
owners like it. Um, they can raise the rent on average. Uh, let's see. So the parakeet cost is, let's say it's uh, $10 a month. Uh, property managers can charge $30 a month and keep that extra 20 for themselves. <clears throat> they can do their operation costs, get rid of keys, lower their energy spend, prevent damage uh, from water, due to water. I mean, if you imagine someone that owns a 10-story building and there's a water uh, condition or, or a flood condition in the top floor, it could take out the whole entire building uh, over time. And this is a great way to, uh, to prevent that. <clears throat> So for the, um, for the building owner, <clears throat> they can increase their revenue, decrease their operational costs, and actually increase their, their building value. And this kind of gives some numbers, just basically how much they can uh, increase the, uh, the value of their building. Basically by charging, again, $30 a month times 12 is $350 a year. 350 times 200 units is $70,000 a year. They can increase their, their uh their income by just by offering a smart home to the resident, which is something they already want. So it's kind of nice. So Parakeet saves money. We track renters, eco-friendly, and we're constantly improving. And also, this is the last but not least, we can also private label uh, our app and our system. If you have a customer that's uh, that wants to, to have their own brand, we can do that for them. Uh, or we can have Parakeet however we want to play it. And let's see, I'm going to exit full screen. Okay. Recording fits you later. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'll show you another screen here, real quick. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is for dealers, integrators, installers uh, to help you to make more money. Uh, by offering, again, uh, our system to multifamily users. And I'm not sure how big or if anyone can see this. Basically, we charge $15 per month for our system. What our proposition is, is if you, as an uh, integrator, dealer, installer, were to bring us a customer, we would split that money with you. So $7.50 would go to Parakeet, $7.50 would go to you. Uh, again, let's say you were to install a unit building, you can have a hundred uh, sales for door locks, a hundred different sales for thermostats, uh, $7.50 a month for each and every unit. It's about $7,500 a month just to, um, just to uh, install one of our systems. And I think that's about it. Uh, Brad, did you want to add anything or can you? Can anybody talk? Richie, you there? Yeah, I'm here again. Uh, if Brad turns on, looks like Brad turned on. There we go. Yeah, uh, can you all hear me? We have you, Brad. Yeah, do you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Dan. Uh, not much to add. I'll, I'll mention a couple of things. Um, so, you know, as Dan was mentioning at the beginning, we are seeing uh, a strong trend with uh, home automation in general, and particularly with uh, apartments. Um, and so one of the things is that's happening is uh, rental operators are seeing that if they put in uh, lights, locks, thermostats, uh, Nest, for example, put them into the units, they can get these higher rents, but then there's no way to manage them. And that's uh, really the opportunity that, that we've targeted with our system. And so, uh, and it's something that you all can come in and, uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's a customer that you have on, a, uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, you can come and manage that system as well. So I should, I should call that out about the system. Uh, I see there's a bunch of questions. So, Dan, we should probably get to those. Yeah, I'm going to respond right now. See, um, where should we go first? Um, can you get the slides to review afterwards? Yes, uh, we can make those available. Um, maybe Richie, you can instruct us on uh, how to make those available. 
Yeah, so Dan, we'll um, do, um, what we'll do there is first of all, um, we'll post a recording of the webinar so you can hear the, the audio as well. Uh, in addition, if you're okay with it, we can send out the, uh, the, the slides to anybody who's interested. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, good. Then we'll make that. Um, anybody who wants that, just let us know and uh, we can actually, you know, we'll just we'll send a follow up email to everybody who attended and we'll just put a link to that. So if you would like to grab those, you can go ahead and do so. Okay. We, can, we can take care of that, Dan. All right. Uh, so I see a next question here, which is, uh, is the private labeling for the installer or the property owner? Uh, we have intended that for the property owner, uh, but you know, I don't know that's something we've considered so much about uh, on the installer side, so we'd love to talk on that. Um, okay, so what, yeah, what options do you offer to allow Z-Wave Lock to be used by multiple tennis standard doors like uh, entry or gym doors? So um, the, the Yale Locks um, can support up to 250 codes. Uh, and so what can typically happen with that is um, it is it is multi-user in the sense of um, staff and uh, renters can all have access to the individual units. And then if um, the doors in the common areas uh, for gyms and um, clubhouses and all that kind of stuff, if they are suitable for uh, the Yale line uh, or other Z-Wave locks, uh, then they can be used as well. But um, some of them have lower code counts, and so, uh, but at 250, you can imagine how all the, you know, if there's 100 apartments in there, then all the all the tenants can get access to uh, common areas. Dan, do you want to take a couple? It's, uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll team up for you. Um, does monthly <laughs> cost? How about this? Does monthly cost include the cellular connection? Yeah, I uh, I, I included a, a monthly cost does include the cell connection. So basically, what we are charging you will be seven dollars and fifty cents per month. You could then go ahead and resell that to the apartment company manager, whatnot, for eight fifty, nine fifty, ten fifty, all the way up to fifteen dollars a month, and then keep keep that for yourself. So again, not only can you gain the installation, but you can gain the, the margin on the hardware, and then also on the monthly uh, recurring revenue. Uh, thanks, Dan. And and it does include uh, the Verizon cellular service. And just to uh, mention again why that's important. Um, so our gateways can run off of Wi-Fi, and if in, and if you are installing into a community that has a dedicated Wi-Fi, that can be a great way to go. But uh, if you are run, if the individual units are running on the uh, renter's internet, that's a problem uh, because you want to be able to control empty units, and that's where the cellular is important. Uh, so that you can you can basically always have a connection whether the internet's active or not, uh, and then and that ties a little bit to that next um, next question I'm seeing, which is, uh, does a parakeet unit need to be installed in each unit uh, apartment slash house? So the paradigm is that yes, it is a per apartment uh, gateway, uh, not a per building, um, and that's that's to do with how the you know how the Z-Wave networks are. Uh, architected, and um, so you, you, if you try to do multi-unit, then you run just some security, some security concerns and whatnot. So, Connor, you, you had a question. So, the 750 is for the installer per unit. I mean, essentially, you could say that we're charging you the installer 750, or you're charging the uh, apartment manager 750. Either way, <clears throat> we could bill them directly or bill you for that. If you if you go ahead and sell into a and you collect the money, then again, you can collect anything above 750 that you find. If you use the Wi-Fi connection, you still have a $15 fee. Well, so again, the cell, the cell cost is a very small part of it. Um, we use the cell because most of the uh, uh, data that's being sent out is, is very, very low. When we start getting into Nest, some of the problems that we found is that uh, there's too much data that's being spit out, so it has to be done on a Wi-Fi network. Otherwise, there'll be too much data being sent over a cell network. Yeah, and, and just to mention, so it does not affect the cost whether it's cellular or not cellular. Uh, so let's see, what's the cost? So smart home. Yeah, the smartphone app is for the renter. Uh, we are working on a uh, an app for the uh, for the manager, but that's going to come down the road. 
So right now, the property manager will go on to his computer, access the, uh, the cloud-based platform, and then make all of his controls from there. Yeah, and the, uh, the product is available now. Um, and the, uh, the paradigm is that, so our web app, uh, the manager uses that. Uh, and that, you know, it is a little bit more, uh, it's designed for desktop in the sense that uh, managers are typically in their office and, and working from their office. Uh, but you can use that web app on your mobile too. Uh, so no problems there. But the but the actual, um, you know, uh, mobile first, uh, mobile uh, native app, I should say, is uh, is for the renter. And so it is for one unit. So David Brown, you had a question. What options do you offer to allow Z-Wave Block to be used by multiple tenants to enter doors like entry or gym door? Right now, we're just dealing with the uh, rental unit, but we have had some requests for uh, common area uh, access as well. But it, it's something that we're working on, but we do not have it just yet. And on uh, Connor's question, um, so yeah, so if a renter is locked out, they can come into the app and they could message uh, the property manager and ask for help. Uh, if they can get into the app, uh, then they can. The renter could unlock the door themselves. They could just press the unlock button, which would be the same as what the property manager would be able to do. They they can remotely uh, press the unlock button. They can also, uh, you know, assign them a new uh, user code, that sort of thing. Yeah, and it, is, it is all live control. So uh, the, either the manager or the renter can come in. They can press the unlock or the lock buttons. They can assign new codes. They can adjust the thermostat live. Um, you know, they can do things like, uh, you know, if let's say they have, uh, you know, there's a it's a hundred unit apartment building, but there's five units that are empty right now, waiting on uh, being rented out. So they could come into those and uh, you know turn the thermostat down so that the heat's set uh, to keep it from freezing, but not wasting energy. Um, and then, you know, they can also see all, uh, on the alerts and things that Stan was mentioning. So if there's a, if the water sensor detects a water leak, um, then the, the manager will receive text messages letting them know that there's a problem. They can also receive emails. And then if they pop into the dashboard, they'll get, they'll get like a red notification next to those properties that, that are having a problem. Yeah, so just so everybody knows, um, we've been relatively successful selling into this space. We, we have a, uh, an LOI with a very large company that has around 15,000 luxury units. They've started a, uh, a pilot with us, and they've indicated that if the pilot goes well, which it should, uh, they're going to start installing in, in all of their units, all of their 15,000 units. So it's a market that is potentially huge that is as actually wide open <clears throat> and retrofitting is is pretty easy since we do have a cell uh, technology that we can have to install Wi-Fi all they got to do is replace their door lock and install one of our gateways and they're good to go exactly the beauty of that is no wires to run anywhere in the system um, and then uh, you know, as Dan mentioned, this is a newer product, so uh, we hope it's an opportunity for you guys and for us uh, to kind of tackle the opportunity and, and uh, get apartments uh, into the smart home air. Yes, uh, so you can get text notifications on uh, several events. Uh, certainly all of the uh, sensors in terms of uh, the water sensor, the freeze sensor, you can get notifications. You can also get notifications uh, on things like entry and exit. So um, a couple of ways that, um, like in the vacation rental side that's been used is if a staff member goes into a unit after hours, it can be a notification generated. Um, when a renter uh, first comes to the apartment, they can get a notification on that. Uh, can can be used for, uh, you know, like welcoming and, and things like that. Um, we have not, uh, so, we can use door and window sensors on this. Uh, let me talk about the security side so for a moment. So our system, uh, as of now, is a home automation system. It is not a security system. Uh, we'll likely go there in the future. Now, we do support door and window sensors, uh, and we have some tie-ins to the HVAC system so that when a, like a door or window is left open, then it can turn off the HVAC. That's pretty useful on the vacation rental side. Um, we have not done uh, much with motion sensors yet, but like I say, again, we do see uh, going there in the future. 
And as far as technical Second support time. goes, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. It's all right. Oh, I was just going to say the hours of technical support. Since uh, we're a relatively young company, we all pretty much work 24 hours a day. <laughs> um, I was just going to answer one of Chad's there about uh, you know uh, Z-Wave in high density applications like this. Um, this is one that we've been involved in for a long time. Even you know before before Parakeet, there was a job that I can remember in the uh, New York City area actually that we worked on. Um, and it was like 900 units in a couple buildings in very close proximity to each other, and they all had a handful of Z-Wave uh, lighting devices in it, and there was never a problem. And it's just kind of part of the nature of Z-Wave, where um, each individual unit can get its own Z-Wave home ID. So they really are completely independent Z-Wave networks, um, just just a handful of devices in each network. So uh, you, you don't have to worry about any problems in those high density applications like that. Right, and, and also, uh, so Sigma Designs, they're the ones that um, you know, uh, promote and, uh, you know, uh, I guess improve uh, the Z-Wave protocol over time. And so they have been doing that, uh, which makes it a better fit for multifamily. Uh, for example, um, the lock devices uh, and others that are battery powered, they uh, sit there and then they're in a low power mode. And then when they get a little signal to wake up, then, then they wake up. And so some of the changes they've done recently are a little message for every hey Brad you're kind of breaking up oh uh, sorry if it, can you can you all hear me sounds better now okay so I'm just gonna say one of the changes that they implemented recently was uh, that for that wake-up signal it only wakes up uh, from its own home network uh, previously yeah, if uh, a neighboring network said to wake up, then all the locks around it would wake up. So, um, you know, they they are continually improving it and uh, making it work better for the multifamily. Uh, does the device communicate with Wi-Fi devices? We do have the ability to communicate with Wi-Fi. All we'd have to do is put a Wi-Fi chip in our gateway. Uh, again, it just depends on how we're going to set the uh, set the system up, <clears throat> whether there's Wi-Fi available to building, and if there's not, you know, typically it's going to be cell. So. And low power notifications for the tenant. Uh, typically, it's on the, the dashboard. Uh, Brad, can you speak to the app as far as low battery notification? Yeah, low battery notifications uh, do go to both renter and uh, the managers. Um, and we can also segment it so that uh, it goes to the renter only uh, if the unit's rented, and then it goes to the manager only uh, if it's if it's not rented. Okay, so the next question is: Are we integrating Nest? And the answer is yes and no. We've been talking to Nest uh, to configure their, their thermostat to optimize it for us. One of the problems, however, is that that Nest thermostat spits out a, a tremendous amount of data. And that data we do not want to send over our uh, cell networks just because of the broadband uh, constraints. So we're still working with them. Um, and if it's a Wi-Fi situation, we probably could work with them on a cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration sort of thing. Uh, but right now, if, if you know, a lot of the customers that we're talking to are strictly wanting to sell because they don't have a Wi-Fi network. And if that's the case, it makes uh, the Nest prohibitive, cost prohibitive to, to send it over our cell networks at this time. At this time. Um, so the, the uh, preferred thermostats for us uh, are the radio thermostat line. Um, so basically anything in the line. And we've also uh, go control too. We're starting to work with a couple of other thermostat companies too. The question also, how long has the product been on the market? So the company is three years old, but we launched the product about two years ago into the vacation property uh, space. Space. Yeah, and some of the, um, you know, like the mobile app that is new for the, uh, for the apartment space. Um, so there, you know, that's this is a, it's it's essentially a new product launch, uh, and that's been the last four months or so. <clears throat> So Henry, your question, some units have a proprietary HVAC uh, system. Basically, what we're controlling is thermostat. If the thermostat is able to control the HVAC system, then we're able to, to do it.
Um, next uh, question there is, uh, do we integrate with, uh, do we do anything on the entertainment side, um, whether it's uh, audio, video, or things like that? Uh, at the present, we don't, uh, and, and it's not yet our focus. Uh, we are trying to do kind of the staple items, if you will, that uh, that apartment renters, uh, you know, are, are, are like using and wanting, um, and that goes a little bit deeper. So I see us doing that in the future, but uh, not at this time. What, what we do see probably as a, as a more um, short-term uh, entry into that is uh, Amazon Echo integration so that uh, you can use the, the Echo to uh, control the parakeet system and then also use the Echo to do some of the, uh, some of the AV stuff. Uh, we haven't done any shades so far, but there are some Z-Wave uh, shade control units, and those would be uh, very simple for us to add, uh, and we'd love to chat on, about that. Um, so David Brown, are, uh, you said, are you uh, distributing products other than your device? So we, we have four products, um, are, and so the, the one uh, hardware product is our gateway, and then the other products are our cloud, our mobile app, uh, and our uh, web app that the manager uses. Um, and so we uh, we are retailing the locks and the thermostats and things like that, um, but we're typically sourcing those from uh, Worthington. And so you're really better off to go, you know, directly to Worthington um, and things like that. And, and that's not really the, the retail aspect is not the focus for us. Hmm. And Chad, your question about as far as uh, support telecom or excuse me, intercom, we're we've started at the beginning of working with a company called Butterfly MX. I believe they're a uh, intercom company and also a, a, an access company. And so we're, we've started talking with them. And if it's something that that somebody wanted, we can uh, we can get into it further. Yeah, and then um, is, and then on the next one is the product line dealer protected, or do you plan to go uh, direct in, to consumer? So um, yeah, th we it is both. Uh, so we are selling direct to uh, property operators and owners and things like that. Uh, and in that case, then you know we uh, we bill them and we keep the uh, the entire RMR. Uh, but what the proposition is with uh, areas installers and and dis and distribution is. You win the account. We split now uh, the monthly. You can bill them. You can be, uh, they can be your customer, etc. Um, so we do not at present integrate with Alexa, but that is uh, that is already scheduled on our roadmap uh, a few months out. And another thing to add too is if you're working with an MDU customer and you need help, um, I am always available either on the phone or if it's a large enough customer, I'll even fly out and help you close that sale. And uh, thank you for the recommendation on the, I guess you would say, Kissy um, system. We'll have a look at that. Uh, the apps are included at the uh, at the monthly price, uh, and there is no charge for white labeling. So uh, again, they you can they can have the option to either just use the uh, Parakeet branded app, or they can have one branded uh, with their company brand, uh, and that's you know that's useful in terms of. Um, you know, building their own their own brand. So Henry had a question: Do we buy through Worthington or directly through you? Uh, we prefer that you buy your hardware through uh, Worthington. Uh, we don't want to be in that business. We actually, are, you know, working with Worthington in that respect. You can contact us directly, and you know, we can work with you with your customer direct. Uh, and then again, we would recommend you buy all the uh, the hardware through Worthington. And does the branding cost extra? I, I suppose it depends on how much work we, we need to do on the app, but uh, so far we're not charging extra for that. Yeah, and, and to, to add on that a little bit, so the typical branding is uh, a choice of colors, uh, a splash screen, and a logo that permeates through the app. So uh, that there's no charge for that, as I mentioned. Uh, if there, you know, if there's custom development that's uh, desired or wanting, then then there could be charge for that. Yeah, and then Henry, you, you would be buying the uh, uh, software through us. 
So Parakeet is a pure software company, even though we do have our own uh, hardware in that at the gateway, but uh, we consider ourselves a software company. Um, as far as a demo program, we do have a demo program. Um, it's, uh, so the way that it works is, uh, so first of all, we can do a, a, you know, a demo of the system over a webinar at any time. But uh, we can then we'll also do uh, typically like a three unit uh, install, and um, there's no obligation on it, meaning that they will pay for the hardware, but they do not get locked into a contract. They can, uh, you know, they can cancel at the end of that uh, demo if they typically three months in length. So yeah, the gateway. So I don't know if you guys can see the uh, uh, the screen on there, but uh, it, yeah, the gateway. Excuse me. Is uh, I believe it's a hundred dollars. Oh, the auto just got got weird. Yeah, it's so the uh, so the. Uh, the hardware that you're looking at right now is to give you an idea of what we, you know, what we've been working with. This is not to, to say that we're trying to sell it to you for any certain price at all. The prices are typically, you know, just as a for for information really. to give you an idea of the margin that you can you can get on some of the stuff. <clears throat> uh, no, the cloud hosting. So we use uh, we actually use the Verizon cloud. Uh, in conjunction with their cellular service, so our hosting, uh, you know, takes place in there. Great thing about that is um, that the devices all live on uh, Verizon private network and not uh, on the internet, so it helps in the security side. Uh, and then on the uh, on the uh, service level, so we, we don't have a. Um, uh, it's not a formal SLA where we're saying you know it's you know 99.99 percent uptime and that sort of thing. Um, but it is, a, it is a highly reliable system and uh, will probably be maturing uh, an SLA over time. So Brett, you had a question. Uh you send out sample units for testing. Yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> Just get in touch with us, and we can uh, we can set that up. Uh, let's get. We have a backup battery. Hey, Brett, you still on? Yep. Uh, it does not have a backup battery, uh, so when the power goes out, the the system is uh, does go down. But uh, yeah, then it comes back up. So one thing I should mention about that is uh, the devices. Um, at least, in, particularly in terms of the access control, are battery powered, and so when the when the system, when the power is out, you cannot distribute new codes. You cannot uh, remotely lock and unlock. But all the codes uh, that are in the lock, you know, continue to work, and so it does not affect it does not affect your uh, ability to get in and out of for you know for renters or for managers their ability to get in and out. Yeah, thanks, Connor. That's a good point. You can do that. It's it, the the gateway uh, consumes very low power, so um, any type of UPS or anything like that would uh, would make it last for um, and you'd be easy to achieve. With, you know, a day of runtime or more. Uh, yeah, the gateway. So. The gateway uh, does run on DC voltage, and then it has a little AC to DC uh, converter that plugs into the wall, um, and that uh, that has a, uh, uh, a retaining clip on it, so you you screw it into the uh, into the outlet to prevent accidental removal removal by renters and so forth. Okay, looks like uh, the pace on the uh, question is slowing down. Um, we would be happy to, uh, you know, answer any questions uh, 
directly or carry on the conversation offline. So uh, please do feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, the standard battery for security. Uh, so the uh, potentially yes. Yeah, so it's a it's a twelve volt twelve volt. Um, um, excuse me, a five volt system, um, and the gateway runs on five volts. So if you have something that you can step to five volts or uh, or something like that, then you could use it. Uh, but like I say, let, uh, let us know what uh, what we can do in terms of uh, carrying on the conversation and and getting uh, sample units and things like that out to you. Um, and uh, okay, so, so uh, see one more. What installs a manager yeah. office? Oh yeah, it's it, that's right. There's no hardware. So uh, outside of the units, um, so you would put a gateway in a unit. You would put uh, all the devices uh, into that unit and pair them to that gateway, and then uh, that all attaches directly to the cloud. And then um, if there's common areas and things like that, you want to have a gateway uh, to facilitate those common areas. Uh, but yeah, nothing needs to go in uh, the manager's office or. Anything like that at all? The gateways connect directly to the cloud. Okay, uh, Richie. Anything else that we should uh, talk about? You know, I think everything was really well covered. We really appreciate you guys uh, joining us today and giving us your time. Um, I think this was fantastic. We got quite a quite a lot of questions answered here. Uh, you know, and like I said in the beginning, this is a market that we see you know only growing. And I think uh, you know a lot of the uh, you know dealers and installers, you guys who we work with. I think you're in a perfect position to leverage this and use it uh, to help you do well. And uh, you know, if there's any other questions we have, you know, please feel free to get in contact with us, and we'll get you in contact with the Parakeet folks, or we'll get the answer for you. Uh, in addition, we will have an email come out this afternoon that's got the link to where you can watch this again, um, or just to grab the PDFs of the presentation if you want any of that information. Thank you so much, Richie, and thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you guys. Again, really Brad, appreciate thank it. Thanks again so much for your time. We really appreciate you guys. Yeah, thanks for the time. We really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll talk to everybody soon then. All right, sounds okay. great. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you guys.